So this is my GPS project and basically it's a data logger for my RC airplane and what it consists of is a standard Garmin GPS unit. They're about hundred dollars. It's off the shelf and a BS2P24 from Parallax and our carrier board also from Parallax. So the GPS unit sends out every two seconds latitude, longitude, speed, and elevation. That's ground speed. And what I can do with the basic stamp is I can ret retrieve all of these data serially and I can store them in an EEPROM, parse it and then store it in an EEPROM. And I can store with the BS2P 1,500 records of latitude, longitude, speed and elevation every two seconds. And then when the plane comes back, I can retrieve this data and, and analyze the flight characteristics of the airplane. Um, it's sort of a, a precursor to making something fly autonomously too because then we can perhaps integrate an inclinometer as well and then the plane can fly steady and level. The way, it, the way it works is I start it and stop it with one button and then another button clears the memory. So I don't have to hook up a PC unless I want to get the data out of the basic stamp. So it's a remote data logger. And the airplane, this is what's called a Combat 60 airplane. And it's a regular RC airplane and it's flying with a 75 engine, outputs a little over 2 horsepower, and it'll fly about 100 miles an hour at top speed. So we had the airplane out and we flew it around and we logged our latitude, longitude, speed and elevation during the flight. So now we're back in the office and I have moved a jumper switch on the basic stamp to put it on the data download mode. And after I move that switch, I just hit the reset button on it within a debug window and then a menu comes up and you can view the data or you can dump it to a PC. Well, viewing it is for viewing a live GPS unit that's connected, but we want to dump the data. And we have 197 records, and those are taken every two seconds. So I press number two, and then the data comes in. It's comma delimited ASCII data, and the format is record number, latitude, longitude, elevation, and then speed. So once you've got it in your debug window, this is using the stamp commands read and then debug for every variable. You can select it all. and copy it. Whoops, try that again. So we'll hit control C and then we can go into a program like Notepad start up Notepad and then we can paste the data in the Notepad. So here it is. So now you have a plain text file and you can take this text file and you can save it as, why don't we call it um, our, we get our flight name, k75.txt, save it. Then we can go into Excel and in Excel you could analyze it, plot it, do whatever you want with it. You can open up a common delimited file
and then it comes. And it puts it all in columns, so you have latitude, longitude, um, elevation, and then ground speed. So you've got it in here. First thing that might be interesting is just to plot the speed, or I'm sorry, the elevation. Select it all. And create a chart. And there's your elevation profile. So we, we took off about 150 feet above sea level in Rockland, California. And then we flew up to about 650 feet. And we came by for a number of low elevation passes. Let's take a look at our speed data, see how fast we flew. And we'll plot this the same way. And there's our speed profile. So we started out zero miles an hour. We carried the airplane out to where the runway is. And then we taxied down the runway the other way. We turned around, then we took off. And we got up to about 90 miles an hour. And then we turned around. We did some tricks. So our speed varied quite a bit because I was usually going fast and then doing a few tricks, which dropped the ground speed down very low. But after, oh, 320 seconds or so, we came back into land. And you can see down here where we, we landed. And then we taxied the airplane back to our, our starting position latitude and longitude on x and y axes and pretty much um, here's where we took off and then we flew kind of the same pattern each time we flew down went into the field then we came back up and we climbed did a few tricks then we flew back again so I probably did that about 10 times so that's just a simple graph showing us where we've been fly by see how trimmed out it is shiny uh, encoder on the back of the um, spinner hub and there's an optical encoder here that uh, shoots out a beam of infrared and counts the duration of time it takes to get from one half to the other. I can't exactly remember which half I'm counting but it doesn't really matter. Um, these counts are for various reasons. Um, this is a two cycle engine but it doesn't fire every single um, every single time it should. At low RPMs it actually fires every fourth or every sixth cycle. And uh, because of that, the power stroke is much faster than, than the other strokes that happen. So when you read this, we found out yesterday, you have to actually take an average of all the readings, uh, kind of a cumulative average through a circular queue. It's very easy to do with the program that we, um, what we used on the basic stamp. And after both props have their averages taken, um, that's compared. The stamp has built-in commands to read the, uh, the signal from the throttle, maintain position stick here. And it changes that into a, what's called a desired RPM. And then it compares the desired RPM to the actual turns on each prop. And then individually controls each servo to, so that the motors uh, attain the desired RPM. Now, okay. Since there's so much vibration here, everything has to be vibration proof. That's just a couple of the resistors needed in order to manage the infrared uh, emitter and sensor. And uh, done on a little board with, a, with um, connectors on there in order to facilitate them. Heart of the matter here is the basic stamp itself. Um, through these connectors it reads the sensors. It fires the emitters and it reads the sensors. Uh, information is passed through this header to the basic stamp which um, reads and averages um, those readings and then it um, it calculates it also reads these two wires here sneaking below I had a, probably a good time to remove this right now <clears throat> with more foam these two connectors that are going down to the receiver here one's plugged into channel 3 which is the throttle demand 
The other one is plugged into channel 5, which is a snap switch, usually used for landing gear. This time I'm using it for an enable disable so that, well, it is a test prototypical system, so I want to be able to enable and disable this thing if it should happen to get weird or something while it was in the air. Um, so the stamp is reading the throttle uh, command and the enable, and through the little interface board it is um, sensing the turns on each um, on each motor and based on those on that information it's generating pulses going out to control the individual throttles here and hopefully maintain equal turns on each motor and that's that's the gist of the system